As I said earlier, my name is Thomas Bird, and I'm the host and executive producer of the Education Town Hall. And it's been an honor and a pleasure and a privilege to be one of the MCs today. So I'm going to make my final introduction. We now have coming to the stage parents who took a strong stand this year to save their only remaining neighborhood school. They went on a hunger strike for 34 days. So please welcome the heroes of the movement, the Diet Hunger Strikers, Jit Tu Bong, who are also on my show. Thank you, sir. I want to thank the Mighty Bats, Save Our Schools Coalition, Network for Public Education, which I'm proud to serve on their board of directors, along with the United Opt Out Movement and every organization that helped put this rally together. My name is G2 Brown. Um, National Director for the Journey for Justice Alliance. And one thing that I thought as soon as I got here, I'm inspired because I know we can fill this place up. And I think that the great poet, freedom fighter, Bob Marley said, there's a natural mystic blowing through the air. If you listen very closely, you can hear that in Milwaukee, when charter schools thought they had a clean slate, organized people now have the charter school movement running for their lives. And in Milwaukee now, there's a mandate for sustainable community schools. In Newark, New Jersey, where they felt that the people were so beat down that they couldn't fight, a group of bold students occupied the superintendent's office for three days, <laughs> shut down traffic. A group of bold parents who had the pulse of what was happening in Newark made a decision to file Title VI civil rights complaints about the civil rights discrimination of what's happening with our children and also launched a boycott of Newark public schools. And for the first time in American history, privatization has been found guilty. So now, the struggle is to make them do some get right to the children in Newark. Right. In Seattle, they thought that the testing movement was gonna have a clean slate until some badass teachers right. and the Seattle NAACP said different. Ooh, sorry about that. In Detroit, after they came after the teachers in Detroit and destabilized the community in Detroit, they wanted us to believe that there's no hope. But right now in Detroit, parents, students, and teachers are organizing freedom schools. And they're meeting in the woods to organize around how they're gonna win their schools back. And oh, Chicago where we supposedly had the most powerful Democrat in the United States. We had a, we had a mayor that nobody could stand up to Rom the Bull. Until Rom ran up against the mighty Chicago Teachers Union. And let me make it plain, until he ran up against a group of black people on 42nd Street on the south side of Chicago, the Kenwood up with a community organization. And when they tried to take our last open enrollment neighborhood high school, a group of mothers, not activists, not professional organizers, mothers and fathers who love their children and said that they are not gonna negotiate with their executioner, put the mail on blast. And now, the principal diet is calling me, can we meet? And so now we are determining what the curriculum is going to look like in that school. And that school is opening up in a matter of weeks. I could go on. 
in New York, now after 10 years of carnage by Bloomberg, now community schools is the law of the day. So what we're saying on behalf, on behalf of the Journey for Justice Alliance, a national network, y'all see the blue and white shirts in the house, Chicago and New Jersey make some noise. A movement is within our grasp. A real movement that will transform public education is within our grasp. But I want to share something with you before I introduce the real hero, Mama Irene Robinson. Something that happened during the hunger strike that I think is a lesson for all of us. In Chicago, a hyper-segregated city, it is very hard to find opportunities where black people and white people and Mexican people and Puerto Rican people come together and struggle. Now we may show a little support here and a little support there, but during that hunger strike, white mothers cried with us in the middle of the park in Washington Park and cursed out Rahm Emanuel's staff. Mexican mothers brought us broth every day. And for one of the first times that I've seen, people across the city made an emotional commitment. White teachers in the Badass Teachers Association helped to make diet trend number one on Twitter for five straight days. So here's what I believe, in, in our humble opinion, the missing link. When we talk about what's wrong with education, we don't start with structural inequity. We don't start with the fact that we have a school system that, and a system that hates black and brown children. We say, well, there's racism, yeah, it's bad, but we don't start there. We don't say that the school system, that in America, the most unresolved sickness is this country's entrenched hatred for black people. And that hatred for black people infects public policy, infects housing, it infects education, it infects uh, uh, op job opportunities, it infects policing. That hatred is made evidence to us in almost everything you can look at. And we feel that hatred. That's why Ashawn broke down. Ashawn is not here to entertain anybody. Ashawn is a young man who, with all his beauty and all his brilliance, his future is uncertain because he lives in a country that hates him. So, if that is the truth, how committed are we to fight to change that reality? I know white warriors in this audience who I have love for, who have done nothing but support our work. The question I have for you is will you fight with us on that front? Will you organize in your communities to end racism, to end racism in your communities so that people aren't comfortable going on television trying to explain why Eric Gardner got strangled out in front of millions of people. They're not comfortable saying why Tamir Rice got gunned down as a 12-year-old boy and trying to explain it away to black barbarism. We have to be honest, brothers and sisters. We went on a hunger strike. There was nothing pleasant about that. We went on a hunger strike because the system hates our children. And despite the fact we had a world-class plan crafted out of love, they could not fathom having black children treated like white children on the north side of Chicago. And since they couldn't fathom it, we had to go to extreme measures to let them know we got to have it. We got to have it. And what I'm saying to you all here today is that this is not a game. This is not an intellectual exercise. This is not something we just gonna talk about in focus groups. How many of you all have touched the body of a child who was once alive and vibrant, and you're trying to reconcile in your head, how is this boy not here anymore? Because the system hates him. How much
much do you love them? That's the question. How much do you love them? So I want to introduce somebody. Because Fannie Lou Hamer said, because some of us think that you know, if my name is Dr. G2 or G2MED, then that means that I'm more qualified to be in this struggle. Come on, come on, G. But I'm here to tell you, you better not forget that it was a woman with a third grade education that cleared the way for all of us to have the right to vote. So I want to call somebody to the stage who said something. This woman has 14 grandchildren, 16 grandchildren, folks, it's busy, 16 grandchildren. And I want y'all to think about this. When you kiss your child, how many of you love your children? Raise your hand. So when you kiss your child and you walk your child up to the front of a school, you are exhibiting trust that that system will somehow do right by your baby. Come on, but what we have is a trust betrayed. Yeah. We have a people betrayed. Yeah. And we are beyond the point of trying to drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah. And this sister standing right next to me had no business being on the hunger strike in regards to her physical health. But we couldn't get Irene Robinson off that hunger strike. That's right. The woman all but cursed me out when we tried to get her off the hunger strike. This woman had to go to the doctor over and over, but would not leave because that what that is, is called love. And with pure love, we can't lose. So I want y'all to make some noise. I want y'all to make some noise. For my sister, for my sister, Mama Irene Robinson, make some noise. I don't have much time, but I do want to say closing schools is a hate crime and it's a direct attack on our children of color. And when you close schools, you close them out of getting an education. You, you mistreat our children. These are our children and we say no more killing of our children. No more murdering of our public education. No more So I'm just saying that we all know that racism have came in our community, have took over our home, have took over our school, have took over our house. We have to stop it. And only we can stop it. I couldn't talk long, but together we can stop it. No one has the right to take our children and mistreat them and kill them while we stand in sack. I went on a hunger strike to protect our children. We went on a hunger strike to put our life on the line for our children. So as a, uh, as a group of, I'm sorry, as a group of people, we must unite together. These are our children. I have a dream that all children supposed to be together. Every child supposed to have a world-class education in their neighborhood school to be safe, not to be fighting, not to be scared if they're gonna live for today or tomorrow. No. I'm, I'm can I They're gonna kick me out. I had a speech, but I couldn't I say it. Tell the short. Okay, tell the short. We got the speech. We got the speech. We got the speech. Okay, I have 16 grandchildren. Okay, I have 16 grandchildren. And nine of them have been victims of racism in Chicago public schools, where black schools have been sabotaged and closed, right, right. and children made to think that they are there. 
My grandchildren was shopping from one school to another school as if they was dances of broom. Not, not human beings who deserve to be treated like their, their lives matter. Please hear me when I say it. Closing schools is a hate cr crime. Privatization is a violation of our human rights. In Chicago, um, New Orleans, Philadelphia, Newark, Patterson, and Kennett, New Jersey, and other cities around the country, our schools are set up to fail and through into chaos, and we are and we get to blame for it. The conditions are set up to make us believe we are helpless, that there is nothing we can do. But I stand as a live witness. We are not helpless. We have the power to change. Yeah. And, and we have the power to demand our kids get a world-class education <laughs> across the country for every child. We have to make the decision. The public officials and no one else make the decision on our children's life. We are demanding that our boys be heard. Under no circumstances do you let any system, no one, allow to hurt our children. I say that again. Under no circumstances, we don't sit back in silence and let somebody take our children and do what they want with them. These are our children, and we make the decision over. And just as we want our house safe, we want our neighborhood safe. We want our school safe. We want all the money that Rodney Daniel stole from us without our school. We want the tip money. We want 50 sustainable schools. We want it all back. And as I say, and I say it again, closing schools is a hate crime. We want everybody on the board off the board. We want educators. We want parents. We want people who love our children to teach our children. We do not want many jail cells and school. I say again, together we will win. 34 days I'm going home with strength. It made me strong. You know, you know what? This is modern day slavery. I ain't no slave for nobody. Free yourself and free our children.